Hello, Gary Stearman. Time for another daily update from Prophecy in the News. It's Thursday, the 21st of March. In studio with me today, Tom Horn, Chris Putnam. Now, you remember that they collaborated on this book, Petrus Romanus. April 2012 was the issue date on that book. And Tom, a lot's happened since April 2012. Go into the details of everything that's happened at the Vatican that yeah. were predicted in this book. Yeah, well, we actually went out on a limb predicting that uh, Pope Benedict would step down. We thought that he would step down in March or April of 2012. And since no pope had done what we said he was going to do for 600 years, we kind of put our neck out there you did. on the chopping block. But that's what we thought was happening. We even felt that there was something unusual, prophetic, that was unfolding around this. Uh, so we made the prediction in the book. We rushed to get it out by April last year because we thought he was going to step down in March or April. Um, and we have found out since that indeed he did step down in March of 2012. He did it secretly. He did it internally at the Vatican, only to a handful of cardinals who are members of the Curia, the, the Vatican government. And they kept it in a strict reserve. They kept it as a secret. Now, Elsewhere in our book, we said, but if he doesn't step down in March or April, we think he certainly will before the end of 2013. And lo and behold, February 2013, the Pope comes forward and makes official uh, his resignation, which, so in a very strange way, we were actually right in both instances. And of course, what really got Chris and I busy was about three weeks before the Pope resigned, I went on a radio show uh, and was talking with Steve Quayle, and I said that the Pope's uh, resignation is imminent. And uh, about 21 days later, he stepped down, and then a phone started ringing, and everybody in the world wanted to know, okay, who's your insider at the Vatican? Well, one of your insiders is Chris Putnam, and he's a guy who knows how to dig deep when it comes to basic research. And you're very deep and, and highly... Um, systematized pattern of research, Chris, is, is what really puts the, the, the cherry on top of the ice cream sundae when it comes to Petrus Romanus. Well, well, thank you very much, Gary. You know, a lot of people are aware that this book talks about this 900-year-old uh, prophecy of St. Malachi, but I mean, not as many people are talking about, but you know, I spent just as much time writing about Israel. There's two chapters on Israel in this book that, and just as much as I write about the Malachi prophecy. And the thing that, that's interesting is we also talked about rumors that the Vatican was trying to get sovereignty over certain holy sites in the old city of Jerusalem. Now we all know that Bible prophecy centers on the city of Jerusalem and that's where we expect Jesus to return. That's where we expect the final events to play out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if our thesis is right, if, if this final pope is the biblical false prophet, if, if, that, if that hypothesis is correct, we would expect him to, to have a seat in Jerusalem. Well, in February of 2013, the internet was ablaze with the announcement that they had resolved that negotiation and that the Hall of the Last Supper in the building called the Cynical on Mount Zion was going to be given over to the sovereignty of the, of the papacy. Wow. You know, this new pope, uh, a very unusual man from Argentina, uh, you predicted uh, that he would come or would probably come uh, of Italian descent. Comes from Argentina, of Italian descent. These things are very meaningful. And by the way, uh, Pope Francis I is the answer to the media's dream. Uh, because, I mean, this man is photogenic. He is likable, lovable, took the name Francis. Uh, it's an astonishing PR coup in one way, but it's something else too, right? Yeah, it was actually um, a, a greater fulfillment, if you will, of the final line in the prophecy of the popes than we could have even hoped for. You remember last year we did a show with you in which I said uh, that the new pope does not need to be named Peter. All he needs is to be of Italian descent in order to be a fulfillment of the final line, Petrus Romanus, and of course George Bergoglio, who's taken the name uh, Pope Francis I, uh, is of Italian descent. Both his mother and his father were Italian, so he's of Roman descent, fulfills the line Petrus Romanus. But it gets even better, naming himself after Francis of Assisi. Uh, Francis of Assisi's original name was uh, Francisco di Pietro, or Peter 
di Bernardone, uh, a person who was an Italian. Wow. He was a Roman, <clears throat> and his name can literally be translated Peter the Roman. So he names himself after him. Secondly, uh, and this really blows me away, that uh, I know that Bergoglio knows this. He's a very educated man. He's a Jesuit, right? He's got yes. degrees both in theology and science. Well, Francis of Assisi is the guy who prophesied that when the final pope arrived, he would be a pope under the control of Satan. In fact, he uses the term a destroyer, not a true pastor, who will, through cunning, who he'll, he will appeal, he will be cunning, he will be favorable, the media will love him, and he's going to lead the world astray. That's what the namesake of Bergoglio's, uh, the pope, uh, new Pope Francis said. And then the third and final thing is he is a Jesuit. Now that we didn't see coming. There's never been a Jesuit who's been elected uh, to the pontificate, but as a Jesuit, he perfectly fulfills what we outlined in Petrus Romanus as a pope who would emphasize the supremacy of the Roman Catholic Church and of the pontiff over all other religions and all other religious leaders in the world, and he's being heralded as such even by Protestants now that's, who are saying this is our pope. Uh, that's astonishing, and I see that Chris is holding a, a, one of his research tools over there. You've got a book, and I assume you want to read a quote out of that book. Certainly. This is uh, the book that Malachi Martin wrote about the Jesuit order when he got a release from his vows to expose what he thought was a, was a threat to the Catholic Church. The title of the book is The Society of Jesus and the Betrayal of the Roman Catholic Church. Um, well, what's interesting is the thesis of the book is stated right in the first paragraph. I'll read just a, a little snippet here. It says, the, a state of war exists between the papacy and the religious order of the Jesuits, the Society of Jesus, to give the order its official name. That war signals the most lethal change to take place within the ranks of the professional Roman clergy over the last thousand years. Okay, so the whole thesis of this book is that the Jesuits had become humanistic and rationalistic, the embrace of Darwinism, the embrace of Pierre Chardin's kind of mystical evolutionary yes. pantheism. Um, that They had embraced these really anti-biblical ideas that fundamentally undermine uh, key theological tenets of the Bible. Uh, Malachi Martin objected to that. Now, I wouldn't agree with all of his Catholic beliefs, but um, he saw them as a modernist threat to the traditional theology, and the fact that we have the first Jesuit pope tells me that this war has been resolved and the Jesuits won. The book is Petrus Romanus, published last April 2012, yours for 1995 plus shipping and handling. However, we're including it with a package, uh, their new book, Chris and Tom have come up with Exo Vaticana, which takes Petrus Romanus to the next step. And it's all about the Vatican's belief in aliens. And that's all I'm going to say right now. Order both books, <clears throat> ask for the Project Lucifer and the Final Pope package, and you get a free data DVD, which has literally hundreds of items on it. The research that Tom and Chris have actually used to put together these books uh, this library alone is worth the price. Believe me, it's a wonderful data DVD. Project Lucifer and the Final Pope Package, yours for $39.90 uh, plus shipping and handling. And you've got the number on your screen even as we speak. Gentlemen, we are down to the last minute or so here. Any final thoughts? Well, I'm looking forward to tomorrow's show because I think now the rubber will hit the road. In, and we're going to talk <laughs> about Exo Vaticana. And I know that there was a sense of being driven onward in a, in, a, in a kind of a hurry, Chris, isn't that right? Well, absolutely. I mean, every time we think that we're going to be able to take our time and research, <laughs> I mean, the, the events just started happening. I mean, Pope Benedict steps down. I mean, we were right. just driven by history. And history is moving at light speed today, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, I've been writing uh, articles on Bible prophecy for many years now, and even I can't believe what I'm writing about these days. Surely, Jesus is coming soon. So keep looking up. Hey, he's coming.